When you want to branch your code, ifelse is often a bad choice. Let's look at how you can do branching in a more object-oriented way. Our first example deals with state. Sometimes you want an object to behave differently depending on which state it's in. And here we have a very simple account class. There's nothing fancy going on. We have three states open, closed or frozen, and we may allow overdrafting. This is like the typical thing you would find in production code. But branching like this is not ideal because it's difficult to spot bugs and perform bugs fixing. And second, it may be difficult to add new functionality because you have to do so by modifying existing branches or adding new branches. And that doesn't really go well with the open closed principle. One way we can eliminate these branches are with specialized state objects. So if I go to another class, you will see it's the same account class, but this time we're using state objects to deal with the withdraw amount method. So here we are essentially delegating uh, the implementation to specialized objects. And here you will see the classes. So to begin with, it's way more code, but looking at each class in isolation, you will see that it will be much, much easier to extend functionality, to add new functionality and do bug fixing. So here we have another example of using guard clauses. And for this, we have a create user command that will essentially just take a username and create a user and store it to the database. That's the point of this. Before creating the user, we need to check if the username is actually valid. So we have a bunch of if else cases here. If they succeed, then we're going to create the user, save it to the database and return true. One way we can easily make this more readable is just by removing the else if and else. There we go, much more readable. If we go into the user, you will see that we have the exact same guard clauses going on here. Whenever you see this, you have the same guard clauses for the same concept. So the concept of a username, we can extract that to its own class. There we go. Now we have encapsulated all the username logic into this specialized class. It's just a matter of switching the primitive type to this new user object. And there we have it. Then we have completely eliminated all the if else checking and, and all that stuff and just encapsulated in its own class. We can take this one step further because whenever you need to use a user class, it's going to be a bit awkward. Right, so this is not really a great syntax for creating users. What we can do then is we can say this username is like you can use a string whenever you need to use the username. And we're going to do that with implicit operators. So that is it. Now we can actually go back here and remove the class. There we go. So here we have a method that uses the strategy pattern and based on the formatting that we have cho chosen and the type of the object that we're passing in, we're going to do some conversion or formatting on that uh, passed an object. So for example, if we have escaped string and the context is a string, then we're just going to escape it. If it's a date time, then we're gonna pass, uh, we're gonna format it to year, month, day. If it's a decimal, we're just gonna do thousand separate on it with no fractions, as you can see here. And if there's no formatting, then we're just gonna two string it. And that is pretty much it. And we want to apply some formatting on the properties. Then we're just gonna do like this. And then I have a two CSV method here. That is very basic, just going to grab the properties, grab the CSV info, and then create a string based on that. So nothing special here. An issue with this approach is whenever you have a new format, say long date, for example, we would have to go into this formatting method and add that one. And then do some formatting, right? But we can do this smarter in a way that doesn't require us to modify an existing method. Okay, so this is basically the skeleton of what we want to achieve. We want to have the same CSV info attribute, but this time we're not going to take an enum, we're actually going to take a type. And we want to take a type that implements the I value formatter. So we're going to do like this, just a few checks.
So one thing we want to make sure is that the formatter type actually has a default constructor, a parameterless default constructor. And now it's just a matter of implementing each branch that we were looking at right here. So we want escape text class, we want a short date class, a thousand separator, and we already have the no formatting class. Now we have each branch separated into specialized objects. And we can pretty much take this user class and apply those types. And there we go. Now we can easily extend this by just making new types and that's it.